So what are we going to call this? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Let's just call it the uh, all things. To the, no, no, throws the throws show is fine. Yeah, yeah throw show. Okay. All right, let's do it. So we're here with the throw show, first episode, um, although it's not the first vlog or podcast, geez, that we've ever posted on Throws You, but this will be the throwing base podcast, obviously for Throws University, and I'm here with my co-host, Trevor Stutzman, so Trevor, thank you for being here. Anytime. Um, <laughs> like you're not here all the time, anyway. Um, so... What I was thinking about with this podcast is that we could sort of go over, you know, in different episodes, obviously, uh, training methodologies, technique, periodization, um, special strength work, experiences, athletes we're training now, you know, athletes that we 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 see and, and that we don't work with and maybe unique things that we might see on social media or, you know, YouTube or whatever, and then... Even at the at the peak of the the track season, we can even start to address like results from different meets. So I think that for me, this could just be something that covers all things throwing and yeah. is an outlet for us to sort of express our experience and and create content based around you know what we're seeing on a daily basis with our throwers. And so to introduce Trevor officially as I mean not officially as a coach here at Garage Strength, but Trevor's, you know, one of the first throwers that I was fortunate to work with at Garage Strength. Uh, he's a three-time NCAA All-American at Messiah College, and he was a coach at Toledo University and... University of Toledo. Oh, okay. I was, I was worried <laughs> about that, actually. So University of Toledo, he coached there, and he coached... Um, what's, Kai, what's Kai's last name? Uh, Kai Neal. Yeah, so he coached Kaisha Neal to uh, NCAA qualifying position. Um, he did a lot of good stuff there within the two years that he was there. And then I sort of conned him into moving back home to Pennsylvania to work at Garage Strength. And basically he's taken over the, the – uh, you know, the high school throws program, and I've been able to move into, like, the that post-collegiate program that we have here um, with our throwers on site. So, you know, I think we're in a pretty cool spot where we, we're going to have a couple really, really high-end female throwers this year, and, and I think Jeff will throw pretty, pretty well. Um, sorry, Jeff, if you're listening. Um, I do think you're going to throw far, though. He will. Yeah. And then, you know, on top of that, we've got, in on the post-collegiate side, we've got a whole bunch of, you know, world-class throwers, discus throwers, and, and female shot putters. So, I think what's cool is that Trevor and I, on a daily basis, can, can sort of discuss technique, discuss progress, discuss lifting, and, and all these things, and then... I think what's unique is that we almost find ourselves discussing the mental side of training more than, than anything where yeah. we're talking about like somebody can't handle cues or somebody just breaks down because they're trying to change their technique or, you know, this person is so much different from that person. I think that that's something that often gets overlooked, but because there's two coaches on site with that and we're pretty like-minded that we can sort of feed each other good information and, and question what's going on and, and constantly make progress in our training system. Yeah. So And that, that's why I think this is good too because we just like like all day we're either boxing each other or talking to each other about like stuff that's going on with our athletes when we're not always like at the circles at the same time right. yeah, when yeah. we're coaching, yeah. you know, our throwers. So like I think this is just a good opportunity for us to be able to sit down and just like... To improve it, even yeah. our relationship. Right, exactly. Yeah. And just like I think to have that communication going back and forth you know and you know i think there's just another opportunity to do that yeah so this is what i was thinking is that we could sort of talk a little bit about now and now trevor trevor is coaching at kutztown university as well now so he's 
taken on this role as a Division II throws coach at Kutztown University. He's also the co-owner of Throws University. And he's helping uh, and has created a powerhouse of high school shot putters and discus throwers at Garage Strength. So he's sort of got three hats he's wearing right now. But my goal for tonight was that we could sort of talk about where your groups are at in training, where my groups are at in training, and then do like a real fast, like one minute, I throw things at you, you throw things at me, we give answers, and then we're done as, mm-hmm. as the, that intro podcast. So, um, yeah. So, Trevor. Right. I'll start off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've got, well, let's see. First of all, I'll, st- I'll start with the high school group. So, basically, there's been like... Really, the, a lot of this comes off of Payton. Like, I didn't coach Payton, didn't coach Payton, but after Payton, I kind of took over the the high school crew. So Payton, but, he's talking about Payton um, Montana, who's a, the high school national champ last year. She's a fifty one foot high school shot putter, through one sixty six in the discus, um, and now she's at Penn State. She she left this past year. So, mm-hmm. for those of you who aren't in the know, yeah, and now we're. She was my last high school yeah, yeah, athlete, yeah. pretty much. But basically, like, where the high school crew is now is largely in part because of Peyton. Because a lot yeah. of people saw Peyton throw really far, you know. She threw 51 feet at the state meet. And a lot of people saw that. A lot of people noticed in PA. And, and from that, we got a lot more people coming to the gym to, you know, to throw in a group. And to, you know, make strides towards doing the same thing. And honestly, there are a couple of people like, you know, Maria Keeley yeah. and we've, you know, each Ashley year we've got Ashlyn, Annika who could potential. have potential to get to that point or even beyond that point right. too. Right. So I think like, you know, our goal is to, you know, paid and spearheaded it and we want to back that up with, you know, people getting to that point every single year. Yeah. And, and I think it's only going to keep expanding from there. So here's my question then, you know, because everybody always will use, well, like traditionally they'll use this fall period, you know, so it's what, October of 2018 and they'll use this fall period as, oh, now it's the time to get in shape and condition and all that stuff. So run me through what you do with your high school throwers and, and keep in mind it's football season, it's it's field hockey season, it's... Um, what tennis or whatever else people are playing in the yeah, fall. Yeah. Um, I don't think they play soccer in the fall anymore in PA. They used to for women, only for men. But anyway, um, walk us through what your session would look like with Maria, who's a 43, 44 foot shot putter. Keely is a 46, 47 foot shot putter. Annika, Victoria, all these girls that are throwing that have the potential to be between 40 and 50 feet. Walk us through what you're doing in that session. Yeah. So the first thing we'll do, I, I usually have them do a warm up. Sometimes if I'm usually late and we just kind of get into throwing right away, but I like to have them do a warm up, whether it's like herd mobility or like some caustic squats, uh, jump lunges, overhead squats, something like that, just to get the like. I always I always say like warm up deep ranges of motion. So like being explosive from deep ranges of motion, like that's usually both where the most injuries occur and where you get the most like benefit out of from the throw. It's from those deep ranges of motion, catching the shot, disc back, and being able to finish long on it. Um, so warm up those specific areas. Um, but then we go right into throwing. So we don't do like, you know, we don't jog two laps around the track. <laughs> Not that we have space here to do that anyways, but um, we just go right into throwing take two to three stand throws and go right into full throws. Um, honestly, everyone probably takes like 30 to 40 shot put throws. And honestly, like there are days where I think Annika is taking like 80 discus throws. Yeah, she <laughs> takes a lot. Of it's just, just one she's, after the other. It's like, like are you tired gun. yet? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. But um, so just taking a ton of throws. And meanwhile, like I try and have everyone working on like hopefully one. Sometimes there's two cues two or three cues cycling through their head and i like to you know try and pinpoint one specific technical thing to be working on um and basically the goal in that practice is just to get as far as much progress on that one thing as we can and if it happens then do it again and if you know getting that consistency with 
the technical change that we made is, you know, that's how you make progress. Right. Um, but then basically after throwing, we just go right into the weight room, start off with Olympic lifts, snatches, cleans, jerks, um, any variation. And then, you know, if it's leg day, we do squats, one-legged squats, front squats, back squats. If it's upper body day, we start, we start with bench and then go into the accessory lifts. And then we finish with doing like any kind of special strength exercise. So, uh, dumbbell throws. Um, I have some throwing bowling, a bowling pin into the net with a half turn right now. Um, anything like that, that works on the specific throwing movement and is usually with a heavier implement to, to help work with strength, um, as well. Um, and so the critical thing, like the difference there is that I'm not having them like condition or like, like a typical. Well, you're like, having them conditioned by the de- definition. Right, right, right. Of, and a, a, a traditional, like, high school, even college, and I could get to that too, get into that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, preparatory, you know, pre preparatory, pre pre preparatory <laughs> phase where we're running to get in shape, to get right. in shape, to get in shape, yeah. to throw. Like, we're just going to throw right away and, um, you know, get in shape to throw by throwing and, mm-hmm. you know, using um our lifting period too to to condition for throwing as well and having everything in that same energy system you know where it's this is the you know probably 10 no longer than 10 to 15 seconds of work where we're going all out being explosive and the more you do that you know the more explosive you're going to get training training that specific system um so that's the approach even at this point in time that i'm taking um, and as we get more into the season, like right now we are doing typically higher volume stuff in the weight room and typically higher volume throws. And once we get into the season, like that'll, that'll come down some and, and with technique too, we're taking more broad, like swaths of, of technical change, you know, as we get to the season, it'll be narrowed down, but it's certainly not the traditional, like, okay, let's just run and get in shape. And then come December, we'll start throwing. Right, right. And no, like hundreds of body weight drills either. So, do you think now, now that you're you're at the collegiate level again, working at Kutztown, and I fully expect you to create multiple All Americans there, Trevor. Hopefully. Um, do you feel that since since you're there, that they, you know, what you know, maybe as a system like. What have they noticed might be like some of the biggest differences since you've yeah. you've come in, you know? One so one of the one of the coolest things <laughs> was what I like I didn't really fully I didn't like come in the first day and just say like, okay, this is exactly how we're doing everything. I just kinda took it pretty casually and just started doing stuff and people would ask questions and I'd answer their questions. But and kind of as we got into it, like it just came up like, Oh, we haven't done much running yet and I was just like Nope, we're not really going to run. We might do some sprints every now and then, but their eyes just got wide and like they were all like ecstatic. They're like, yes, we just get to throw. Yeah. Like, yeah, we get to throw. Like, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Like, we're going to actually have fun, like at practice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, you're a football player. You guys are going to play football today. Imagine that. <laughs> like, wow. And he's like, maybe there were maybe like one or two people who were like, and I really only think no, they no. were upset because they had the understanding that they would run to lose weight uh, and that, you know, maybe that they would look better or something with that idea in their head that, you know, running is the only way to lose weight. Yeah. And the only thing I will say is that because you are working with other athletes as well that are going to be throwing javelin. And I, ja- I, that, that's got to be javelin is completely clear. different. Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that is that yeah. needs to be clear yeah. that you know we're not right. saying that you can't that running won't benefit right. running right. sprints and yeah. and stuff like that or even plyometrics for for the rotational movements and right. right. We're not saying that that stuff doesn't work. It does work. It you know, but running meaning like more than more than fifty to hundred meters probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, and that's and all of that and when I told them is like this isn't for you javelin throwers everyone else right. we're not going to be you know doing all that all that stuff but um 
So it's interesting to me that that I think that they might even find it, and we'll I guess we'll we'll find out about this in in the future is that they are going to be making technical changes at a faster pace and at an earlier point in the year on top of that and then on top of that in my mind because they're learning to make technical changes right now Mm -hmm. and technical changes are a very difficult thing to to comprehend mentally Mm -hmm. and to then apply physically so if you can teach them you know for, for what you're doing right now it is teaching them this technical model and, and having them understand this model and then they learn how to manipulate their body to, to get to the model's positions, right? And then all of a sudden now it comes December, January, February and when you need to make little tweaks for conference or you need to make little mm-hmm. tweaks for nationals, it's going to be easier because... They've learned how to learn. You know, they're going to be right, right. three, four months ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah. And now if you have a couple kids who are freshmen or sophomores, now all of a sudden they're not only going to be a couple months ahead of the curve, they're going to be a year or two ahead of the curve based right, off of right. maybe what they, you know, and I, and I can't comment on what they've done in the past. I have no idea. Right, right. But but the fact that mm-hmm. they, they can sit there and make these technical changes now right. earlier in the year is yeah. going to be incredible for them and that that's the whole thing is that it's it's all it's all just building on what you previously had so like i i i swear that throwing comes down to like yeah like you gotta train smart but it's just like throwing a lot like you gotta you gotta approach it in a you know in a smart way but like the more throws you get the the more progress you're gonna get the more it's gonna build especially for you know high schoolers who typically only throw two or three months out of the year right that getting just getting those reps in makes a huge difference obviously for elite throwers you know they're already doing that it's going to be different and i think that's but that like in, in your situation is that you're getting this is like very very important to understand for everybody everybody who's listening to this all three of you is that the for 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 you to understand is that so trevor's going to get d2 kids maybe they they were 50 foot shot players in high school or 35 foot female throwers or 30 to 35 footers like you know people that really only threw two to three months out of the year Mm -hmm. so in a typical system they might throw three years in high school four years let's say they throw four years in high school they throw for two and a half to three months a year they've really only thrown a full year in their entire life and probably three quarters of those throws have been from a standing position so now you get them and if it was a traditional system, they really wouldn't start to throw until November. Now, all of a sudden, they're only going to have five months of throwing, really five or six months of throwing. And then by the time they're done college, by the time they're they're finished competing, as a thrower, they're only going to have three full years of throwing under their belt. And if we would look at that from the yeah. mindset of wrestlers, right. when wrestlers are done their collegiate career, they're, they've got... 14 to 15 years of wrestling underneath yeah, their belt. Yeah. If we take football players, same thing. Yeah. Soccer players, field hockey, well, all these you know, sports. It's interesting you said like wrestling. So what, when I was in college, like I went to Masai, which they have, they have they a have good really wrestling. good wrestling program yeah. for you know, for D3 school. Yeah. But um, I, I like knew the wrestling coach there. And I remember one time he came up to me and he's like, you know, you could have you been a good wrestler if – if you would have wrestled, and he's like, but there's no chance you could now. Yeah. Like, and I was I was even a freshman then. Right. And at that point, like he already knew, like there was no chance. There's yeah. no chance you were even gonna get in the ranks of wrestling. It would have taken probably four years because yeah. you had no background. Right. And you know that's where I that's what is completely missing in throwing. Right. And is and, that and that's why it's so and, easy. and it still can like people can become throwers their freshman year and still do well by right. the, they can do well their you know that year probably right right um if they're you know if they're athletic so think about but, it you know but you, it's like what if we had the same sort of the mindset background yeah. and you know uh you know stances taking the same stances like wrestlers do right and wrestling is an extremely technical sport right, yeah. and extremely physical almost you know it's more physical than throwing is cuz it's mm-hmm. using multiple energy systems but it's just as technical if not more technical than right. than throwing because there's so many different positions. So it's like, why aren't we taking a page? Like these guys have done it before us. The, the science has been done. They've they've studied the sports of they they've studied combat sports. So that's where you know, 
And I think that that's one thing that we tend to do pretty well is, 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 is that that's the attitude that we almost take is that if we can, if we can train these individuals and if we can get somebody, you know, take Peyton for an example, to have the mindset of a wrestler, of a Kale Sanderson, of, you know, the guys that are out there today, of, of someone like Kyle Snyder and then apply mm-hmm. that to throwing that's where the limits of throwing are really going to blow up because you're you're going to get throwers that that have someone like Annika who's from 7th grade has trained 8 to 12 months out of the year yeah. and takes yeah. takes 250 to 300 throws a week mm-hmm. and when she's 24 25 now she has that mindset of that's that's her attitude and and that's her her business like approach to the sport and that's when we might really, really start to see. And and who knows that that might even be when we start to see. You know, if Anika is the one, I don't know, but somebody right. who's in a system similar could mm-hmm. really, really push. You know, world records that are and and do it Absolutely. from a clean yeah. perspective, yeah. just because they've got that built up from that yeah. from that 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 youth base. And I think that I think that approach and and, and I and I I think that sort of gets us back to to where to where we're at. You know where we're at at the beginning is that approach to training and mm-hmm. and that approach to our philosophy and and our take on the training realm of throwing is sort of where we want to be with this podcast is like yeah, hey, yeah. this is how we approach training this is how mm-hmm. we approach the thought process of training mm-hmm. this is how we want to challenge people to think right. and this is you know hopefully an outlet or a media source that we can push on everybody. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully that wraps up the first episode of the throw is the throw show. Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. Throw show. Yeah. Okay, so tune in next time for the second episode of the throw show. Let's go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>